Hello Pro Guides family, welcome back to another great video where today we are going to be taking a look at some professional player settings including Shroud, Hiko, and Brax. But before we get into that, it's time for the question of the day. Today's question is who is your favorite professional player to watch? Personally, I like Skadoodle a lot as I used to follow CSGO pretty closely and watched a lot of Cloud9 matches. His playstyle is also very interesting to watch and sometimes it's nice to sit down and watch someone absolutely dunk on people with a straight face and calculated movements. To all our Twitch fans out there, spam this noodle to help Skadoodle. But before we start, just as a disclaimer, people love to change their crosshair, especially the pros, so don't be disappointed if you find out their crosshair has changed since this guide. With that being said, let's dive into the nitty gritty of competitive shooters, the settings. Starting things off with a bang today is Shroud. Most people know Shroud as the king of competitive shooters, and that definitely is not an exaggeration. With some of the best raw mechanical aim in the world, combined with an uncanny ability to pick apart situations with split-second decision making and amazing flicks, truly cements Shroud as one of the best. So what are the settings behind one of the best players in the world? Also, a shout out to ProSettings.net as they are the people who compiled all of the settings that you will be seeing here today. Shroud plays at 450 DPI, 0.78 mouse sensitivity, and 1.00 scope sensitivity. So if you already know what all that means, great. But we are going to spend a little time breaking down and going over what each of those different numbers mean and how they fit into how your mouse tracks things. First up is DPI. DPI stands for dots per inch. The lower your DPI, the slower integrated sensitivity your mouse will have. That is because by changing the DPI, you're actually changing the amount of pixels your mouse can read in one inch of space. So at a higher DPI, like 2400, your mouse is actually reading 2400 pixels of movement within a one inch space, whereas a DPI like Shroud's is only reading 450 pixels per inch of mouse movement. Next up is in-game mouse sensitivity, and this is probably what most of you guys are familiar with. Where DPI is something that is hardware based and interacts directly with your mouse, in-game sensitivity is a software controlled value that can be changed by Windows or any video game. Sensitivity is simply an arbitrary number games provide to help you tweak the exact speed of your mouse. Most mice either have one fixed DPI or a few interchangeable DPI. If you are lucky enough to have a gaming mouse, you might have a lot more flexibility in your DPI, so sensitivity doesn't matter as much. But for those of us with mice that have set DPI values, sensitivity is a great way to hone in the exact way you want your mouse to work in a specific game. Same thing goes for scope sensitivity. Scope sensitivity is simply just another arbitrary number that the game switches to using if it notices that you're scoping in with a weapon. A lot of players opt not to change this value, and it looks like Shroud is one of them. So let's come back and take a look at all of these numbers together. What we can tell from Shroud's DPI sensitivity and scoped sensitivity is that he plays on a very low sensitivity compared to the average player. This is actually pretty normal for anyone playing competitive first-person shooters at a high level. Lower sensitivity actually gives better accuracy for most people as slight changes in mouse movement when flicking or tracking does not affect the mouse as much because it takes a lot of movement to get the mouse to actually respond in a major way. Next, we're going to talk about some of Shroud's key bindings. One thing that is important to point out is that key bindings are one of the things in competitive gaming that truly is personal preference. If you don't believe me, then go look at a list of professional FPS players from any game and look at their key bindings. I'm sure they all have some similar key bindings, but also some that are just completely different from each other. The best way to find great key bindings is just to experiment and find out what works for you. That being said, Shroud still does have an interesting trick or two with his key binds. First up, Shroud uses left shift to walk, pretty standard, left control to crouch, again, pretty standard, and spacebar or mouse wheel down to jump. To those of you who haven't played CSGO before, having jump bound to mouse wheel in any way seems pretty out of the ordinary, but allow me to explain. In both CSGO and Valorant, there's a technique called bunny hopping. We're not going to be able to get into the details of how it works in this video, but what you do need to know is that it requires very accurate timing on jumps. Bunny hopping allows you to potentially gain some extra speed over walking and also allows you to avoid some damage from AOE abilities if used correctly. However, to keep your momentum, you need those very accurate jump inputs. So by binding jump to mouse wheel, Shroud can actually just spin his mouse wheel right before he needs to input a jump. This will send a flood of jump requests to the PC, making it very hard to miss the timing. To round things off for the movement and interact keybinds, Shroud uses F to interact with items and keeps the default binds for swapping between weapons and the spike being the number keys 1, 2, 3, and 4. Shroud also seems to keep the default keybinds for abilities, those being C for ability 1, Q for ability 2, E for ability 3, and X for his ultimate ability. 
All right, all right, we know this is the part of the video that you guys have been waiting to see, so without further ado, let's dive into Shroud's crosshair. We're going to go over the settings for Shroud's crosshair, then come back to what they mean after. So to start, Shroud uses cyan as the color of his crosshair. For the outline of his crosshair, he has it set to on, with the opacity and thickness of the outline set to one. With the center dot set to off, and all outer line settings set to zero, Shroud opts to use only inner line settings for his crosshair. The inner line opacity is set to 1, length to 8, thickness to 3, and offset to 4. He also turns off fade, movement, and firing error, so it ends up being a pretty static crosshair. So this is just speculation, but I think Shroud turns off all the moving parts for his crosshair because he has already internalized movement and firing error and doesn't need a visual representation of them anymore. This is just another reason why it's important to self-reflect and see how far you've come as a player and to not just copy other people's settings. If you think that you need a bit more work trying to get the hang of movement or firing accuracy, be sure to turn these on so you have more visual representation of how inaccurate you are while moving and shooting. All right, we're going to be moving on to the radar section now, but before we do, it is important to understand why good radar settings can actually help improve your game sense and other abilities. If there was one group of settings that you should straight up copy from Shroud or any professional player, it is probably his radar settings. The radar is one of the most important tools you have access to in Valorant, and it is something that you should be constantly paying attention to. What I love about Shroud's radar is how it shows you the whole map and gives you a good frame of reference as to where you and your teammates are positioned. Shroud uses rotate instead of fixed, keep player centered is off, minimap size is set to 0.978, minimap zoom is set to 0.843, with minimap vision cones on. It is a little hard to describe just based off the numbers how nice it is to have a minimap formatted like this, but I recommend anyone and everyone to try messing around with their minimap settings and find something that works for you. Just be sure to actually look at your minimap from time to time in game. If you're having trouble keeping track of your minimap or you want someone to help you find the perfect settings for you, be sure to check out ProGuys.com. We have amazing coaches standing by just ready to help you. Be it aim, game sense, or just settings, our high elo coaches are there to help you improve, so be sure to check them out. If one-on-one -on -one coaching isn't your speed, no worries, as we got you covered with our Pro Guides Valorant Discord. Join today for awesome perks like notification when videos like this one go live, free Q&A sessions with some of our highest ranked coaches, giveaways and raffles, and so much more. So check out both our website and our Discord with the links in the description below. Alongside Shroud, Hiko has become the biggest Valorant streamer and professional player in the world. As a dedicated Cypher main, you will see him pulling off nasty plays with his mechanical prowess, as well as the 400 IQ outplays you come to expect from a top tier Cypher. We're going to keep things pretty short here as we already went over how DPI and sensitivity affect your mouse, so feel free to jump around the rest of the video as you need. Hiko plays at 1600 DPI, 0.36 in-game sensitivity, and 1 scoped sensitivity. Now, right off the bat, you may notice a big difference in DPI and sensitivity from Hiko to Shroud, but the change isn't actually as big as you might think. Yes, Hiko plays at a much higher DPI, but it is evened out by the lower in-game sensitivity. I think that Hiko's sensitivity is still a bit faster than Shroud's, but as we can see from his Twitch clips and highlights, he definitely is having no problems with it. Hiko uses the same keybinds as Shroud, it looks like, which is more or less everything on default. Left shift for walking, left control for crouching, spacebar for jumping, and F to interact with objects. It is likely that Hiko also had jump bound to scroll wheel at some point as being a former CSGO pro like Shroud, I'm sure he knows the benefits and proper way of bunny hopping. Unlike Shroud, Hiko likes using a white crosshair instead of a more standout color. Color is obviously a personal preference, but most people opt for a more popping color as white has the potential to get lost in a noisy background. But in a game like Valorant where everything was built around clarity, white probably works a lot better than it does in other games. Like Shroud, outlines are turned on and both opacity and thickness are set to 1. What is interesting is Hiko's use of the center dot for his crosshair. He has center dot turned on and has the opacity set to 0.751 and the thickness set to 2. This is an interesting decision as most professional players I think opt to keep the center dot off in a lot of FPS games if they decide to go with a traditional crosshair. Many people claim that having a dot with a traditional crosshair blocks too much vision of the target and it can sometimes make enemies harder to hit. Though it does look like Hiko is following Shroud's example of using the inner lines and not using the outer lines. Kiko's inner line settings are 1 for opacity, 4 for length, 2 for thickness, and 4 for offset. A pretty traditional crosshair all around, it has definitely served Hiko well so far in Valorant. On to his radar settings, Hiko runs pretty similar radar settings to Shroud in that his settings show him the whole map he's playing on and can be used as a good point of reference. 
His minimap settings are rotate, keep players centered off 1.1 minimap size, 0.9 minimap zoom, and minimap vision cones on. We already covered most of the settings when talking about shroud, but one thing I want to talk about quickly here are the minimap vision cones. These are the cones that appear on your minimap to give you a rough idea of what is in your teammate's line of sight. We recommend leaving this on as it provides you with some very useful information that your team would otherwise have to actually communicate to you. If it gets too distracting with all the information on the minimap, feel free to turn it off. Rounding off our video today, we have another former CSGO prodigy, Swag. Swag made the switch to Valorant when the game first entered a closed alpha state when only people Riot invited could play. Rax was also the first ever signed Valorant Pro, getting signed to T1 in early March. Rax uses a low DPI like Shroud, clocking in at 400 DPI, 0.377 in-game sensitivity, and one scope sensitivity. If you notice, that is an insanely low DPI and sensitivity combo, which means that Brax has to move his mouse a lot to get flicks off. It does have the added benefit of if you manage to master a sensitivity like that, the accuracy that you gain is ridiculous, and is how you see Brax pulling off insane aim plays on such a low sensitivity. Like everyone else we've looked at, Brax seems to keep his keybinds pretty standard. Left shift for walk, left control for crouching, and F to interact with objects. He uses the 1, 2, 3, and 4 number keys to swap between different weapons and the spike. And lastly, Brax does use C for ability 1, Q for ability 2, E for ability 3, and X for his ultimate ability. Following the Hiko trend, Brax also uses a white crosshair. Unlike everyone we have taken a look at so far though, it does seem that Brax has opted to not use an outline on his crosshair. Though getting right back in line with everyone else, he has opted to only use inner line, with those settings being 1 for opacity, 5 for length, 2 for thickness, and 2 for offset. His radar settings are also exactly the same as Hiko's, being rotate, keep player centered off, 1.1 minimap size, 0.9 minimap zoom, and minimap vision cones on. Well guys, we hope you learned something new because we sure did. If you liked this video, be sure to smack that like button and even considering subscribing to stay up to date on videos like this one. We put out new content every single day and you definitely don't want to miss it. Until next time guys, my name is Dan. You can find me everywhere at, at Daniel Ammerman and I will see you all later. Peace.